Hello and welcome to lesson three in my guitar techniques series. Since the last video that I made, um, we've done some work on the website. This is the new page under guitars and ukulele and it's in the uh, acoustic and electric guitar section. And on here you can find links to the videos and links to the tabs that you can download. Uh, these are designed to be little bite-sized chunks of tuition, not great sprawling uh, guitar solos that I'm teaching you. I've done all that in the past. The idea with this is just to give you um, some little bits of wisdom that you can put into your playing and some useful tips. These aren't particularly graded. It's just as I think of things and I do the tabs for them, then I will do the lessons and I hope you find them useful. I think the whole idea of teaching famous songs and famous guitar solos is great. I've certainly done it myself on the internet and you can see lots of examples of that uh, on my website, but I think it's kind of been done to death. Hopefully this will be a, a different approach and one that you'll find, like I say, useful. Before you start, make sure your guitar is in tune. I've just tuned my guitar up to E, B, G, D, A, E. Obviously there are other tunings, and we'll get to that uh, in some uh, other videos, but for the moment we're just using standard tuning. I've made a couple of changes um, since the last video lesson. Um, I've decided to start using the more conventional tablature, this stuff, and um, this is kind of uh, universally accepted, and if you're not sure how to read it, uh, well, it's pretty simple. Basically, the lines that run across are the strings, uh, top to bottom, E, B, G, D, A, E. The numbers on the lines are the uh, frets of those strings. So if a line has got a number on it, you're going to play that string, and whatever the number is, that's the fret. So if it says O, it's open. If it says 2, it's second fret. The vertical lines are the same as crotchets and quavers in normal musical notation. I'll go through that. Uh, as I teach you the exercises, and there's all the usual stuff like hammering on and pulling off. Um, underneath, I put the right hand picking. Now, I've changed this. I was using P-I-M-A, and I don't know, it doesn't really sit very well with me. I'm not a classical guitarist. You know, I, I don't tend to think of you know Spanish words for the right hand. So I'm changing this. So thumb is going to be T. Uh, the index finger is going to stay as I, and that makes sense. The middle finger is going to stay as M. If you're not sure, the middle finger, if you look at my hand, the finger that appears to me in the middle is finger uh, number two, so we call that M. So we've got uh, T for thumb, I for index, M for middle. And although we don't use it in the exercise that I'm going to teach you today, uh, this finger that's normally called A in the world of... Um, classical right hand picking, annular the word is, I'm going to call that R for ring finger. So my new convention is going to be T, I, M, R. And I think that's just a little bit more modern, a little bit more sort of up to date. I think the P-I-M-A thing is, I mean, it may, it may sit some people and if you want to change the music, you can, but uh, from now on, I'm going to be using that convention. So sorry if that confuses you, but... You know, things are settling down gradually with these lessons. So, you know, you have to forgive me as I sort of make a few adjustments as we go on. A bit of housekeeping cleared up now. Let's get on with the, the playing. You need uh, the sheet for exercise 10. So go to my website. The address is on your screen now. Go to a guitars and ukulele menu. That's the main menu at the top, one of the main menus. Underneath that, you'll see a load of buttons you can press. One is acoustic and electric guitar. Uh, press that button, I'm doing that now on my iPad, and scroll down and you'll find new technique lessons. At the moment it's the fifth button down, of course that may change over time. Click on that and that will reveal um, the guitar technique page and you've got the videos on the left, the tab on the right, and you need to scroll down, find um, exercise 10, click on that, and then uh, print it out from your computer and have it um, by the side of you as I'm going through this lesson with you. So I've called this claw hammer using D, D added second and D sus four. Let me just play the exercise through for you. A 
Okay, so that's a nice pretty little pattern, all basically on a D chord, just a few little changes as we go. Right, so the first chord is D added second. What is D added second? Well, it's a normal D major chord, a normal D chord. Take the second finger off, exposing an open E. So if you were to strum, let's say the four strings nearest the floor, um, that'll give you a D added second. Some people call this a D added nine because the, the note that we're putting in is the E, which could be called the ninth or the second. Don't worry about that. Just for the moment, we'll call it D added second. You might see D add two. Sometimes you might just see D2, I don't know. But I've, I've written it out in full D added second. That's the shape. Make sure the E string is ringing clear, not, not muted by the um, third finger, not arching carefully enough. Usual things, pressing, arching, close to the frets, short uh, fingernails, and you're good to go. So that's your chord. Now, if you did the first uh, lesson with me, uh, lesson one, all about the claw hammer. We did this pattern first of all, a simple claw hammer where the thumb was going from the fourth string to the third string on the D chord, like that. And the index finger was uh, picking the second string and the middle finger was picking the first string. Well, it's the same exercise, but like I say, with that E string open. So that's the first bar of music. And you can see from the tablature there, the first O is on the D string, the fourth string down. Underneath it is a single line that shows it's a crotchet, a whole beat. Underneath that it says T for thumb. And then you've got a number two on the G string, second fret of the G string. So play the G string and underneath it says T, thumb again. The next thing you see looking from left to right is a number three uh, on the B string, third fret of the B string. You've got these notes if you're holding down the chord anyway. Uh, so you're going to play the B string. Underneath that it says I, so you're going to pick that string with your index finger with a free stroke. Get my thumb out of the way there, like that. Okay. Uh, back to the open D. Oh, by the way, um, yeah, the previous two notes, the second fret of the G, third fret of the B, they are linked together. You can see there's uh, the two sort of vertical lines are beamed. So those are quavers counted to and. So we had one, two, and. And then you've got another pair of quavers, open D, open E, okay? Thumb and middle finger plays that first string. So that's on beat three, three and. And on beat four, you play the second fret of the G string again with your thumb. So that gives you one, two, and three, and four. And if you've done the first couple of lessons with me, you won't find that too hard. Um, Right at the beginning of the tab, you can see 4-4, four, four, that's your time signature. Um, don't worry about the lower number, the top number is the one you need to worry about. Four beats of the bar, so one, two, and three, and four. And play it as slowly as you need to. Like that, or even slower. Notice why I'm picking. I'm not directly over the sound hole. Um, I actually prefer the sound a little bit back from that. The nearer you get to the bridge, the kind of snappier that the uh, the sound gets because obviously the strings are held in quite tightly by the bridge. So I mean, just basically wherever your hand falls comfortably, like I said in the last video. Now the next bar, looking along there, so there's a, ver a thick vertical line. So that's the end of the first bar. So the second bar goes like this. It's exactly the same as the first bar, but this time. You've got an extra note on the end. So the last beat of the bar is split into two quavers. Second fret of the G, like you ended the first bar, but we add on third fret of the B again. So in picking it's thumb, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index. Counted one, two, and three, and four, and, and instantly I've put the counting in underneath. So the first two bars, getting a little bit busier. Now bar three on the next um, row of tablature. Tablature, we often say tab for short by the way. Sounds like this. So it's the same as bar number two, except I'm changing the bass line halfway through, just like I did in exercise one. I'm playing D string and then A string. So on beat three, I'm playing the A string with my thumb just prior to the open E. So it's open D, second fret of the G, third fret of the B, open A, 
open E, second fret of the G, third fret of the B, same picking, thumb, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index. Same counting as the previous bar, one, two, and three, and four, and. And now in bar four, what I do is a little hammer on. Now, I've still got my basic D added ninth chord, which is, just to remind you, a D chord without the second finger on. I'm gonna pinch two strings together, so the open D and the open E, so you can see that the D string is played with the thumb, the E string with the middle finger, just like as before in the previous bars. Play the two strings together, and once you've done that, hope you can see this on my left hand, basically the, the second finger is banging or hammering down behind the second fret. So turning my D added second into a D, like that. You know that? So that's one and, counting one and two and three and four. And then the rest of the bar is the same as the previous one. So you'll have to, at some point in that bar, lift that second finger off so it's open uh, for that uh, one but last note. Okay, so let's have a listen to those first four bars. And that's a nice, tasteful little pattern, isn't it? So that's riffing about on the D chord. This is the sort of thing you could put into a nice sort of folky song, nice sort of love song you're writing, um, a really useful pattern. Uh, very sort of James Taylor-like, isn't it? If you know James Taylor, that is. Um, so, bar five, we're going to change chord, we're going to do D sus four. D sus four is a D chord, a normal D chord, and the little finger goes down on the high-pitched D string behind the third fret. Of course, with the little finger there, you don't really need the second finger down. You can just put those three fingers down. But most people prefer to leave the second finger down because it... It kind of reminds them that D sus4 is a D, you know, with an extra finger, but it's entirely up to you. It's called D sus4 because we're using the fourth note of the scale, D, E, F sharp, G, that note there, that's it. But basically with a D chord. Now, it always sets up a kind of a tension, a kind of, oh, that doesn't sound right kind of feeling, which is resolved in the next bars you'll hear. And that, is just a standard D chord. So I suppose if you've got your second finger down, uh, as you would normally have for a D chord, all you've got to do is really lift the little finger off. Like that, see? And then uh, bar number seven is the same as bar number one, the D added second claw hammer. And to finish, we're going to do a little um, flowery pattern using all of our chords. So, Bar number eight, um, still keep the chord on, okay? It's gonna be D sus four, so you're gonna put your little finger down uh, on the E string third fret, as well as the D chord. Pluck the E string with the middle finger, like that, like that, see that? And then we're gonna pull off. Now, if you're not sure how to do a pull off, watch my left hand carefully. I'm just gonna take the other fingers out of the way for a moment. Get those out of the way. You can see clearly what's going on. So basically, this is where your second finger is normally for a D chord. This is where your little finger is normally for a D sus4. So they're next door neighbours. You pluck the string in the normal way without doing anything. And then you pluck the string, but with the little finger of the left hand. You drag your finger off the edge of the string, thus sounding the second fret, the uh, note just behind that. You can hear that, so you've got the third fret and then the second fret. And the second fret is sounded not by the right hand, but by the left hand. And that's a pull off. I've marked it as a P, some people mark it as PO. So let's put the chord back on, do that normally. There's your pull off. Then you pluck the B string and the G string, index finger, thumb. And then you're going to lift the second finger off, giving you that D added second chord. You're going to play the E string, you're going to hammer that finger on like you did uh, in uh, bar four, but no pinch this time. And then you again play the B string and the G string. So you actually end up with a normal D chord. So your D sus4, pull off, D 
D add his second hammer on. And look at the um, timing strokes underneath. It's four pairs of quavers. So one and two and three and four and. Okay, one and two and three and four and. Okay, so very pretty, very useful little picking patterns, all basically on a D chord. Let's just finish up by playing this exercise once more. And you can go on and on like that. And that's just one chord. Just imagine you start putting that in on different chords and you've got a really lovely uh, professional sound. So that is exercise 10, it's probably enough for one day. Um, I suggest you practice this bar by bar and then start gluing it together a couple of bars at a time until you can play it all eight bars. Get that really fluent. If you find you're struggling on it, slow it right down. Like that, that's there. And then gradually um, build the speed up. Obviously you can mix and match this, you don't have to do it in this order, you could start off with a sus4, go to the D added second. These are just basic ornaments, I mean, you know, what I'm trying to say is you, this is instead of just playing non-stop D chord, which, you know, sometimes it's what you need, sometimes it can be too flowery, um, but these are little ornaments you can do, little things to uh, make you playing sound a bit more interesting. So, uh, hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Um, if you did, um, hit that like button, the subscribe button. On the front page of my website, I will um, announce when I put new stuff up, so keep watching that. Uh, if you subscribe and if you uh, uh, click that bell icon, you'll always get told when I put something new up. Um, so uh, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.